This video deals with why ethanol causes hypoglycemia. Now, ethanol, when ethanol is metabolized, it's broken down to uh, acetaldehyde by using the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase. From acetaldehyde, it's broken down to acetate using the enzyme acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. Now, acetaldehyde can shuttle into glyceraldehyde, and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is a byproduct of glycolysis. Now, in this particular step, what happens? This is very important. Glyceraldehyde to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, we are using NAD plus and making NADH. That's why most alcoholics have a lot of NAD production in their body. They have lots and lots of NAD. So by the time glycolysis reaches pyruvate, we have lots of NADH in our system. As a result, what happens? Pyruvate cannot become pyruvate dehydrogenase. Why? Because this reaction is not favored. Then what is favored? The reaction that actually can use our increased NADH is favored, and that reaction is pyruvate to lactate. That reaction is going to use up this NADH back to NAD, generating more NAD, so then this step can happen. So NADH to NAD is generated by making lactate. Now, this step, pyruvate to lactate is favored. This is one of the steps that's favored. The other step that's favored is that from pyruvate, or in the TCA cycle, we have oxaloacetate to malate. There is a step called oxaloacetate to malate, right? That step also uses NADH to make NAD+. Plus, okay? That's, that step is also favored. So this step and this step, both of them are favored because of increased NADH. So what happens if we have more this step favored and more that step being favored? If this step is favored, we have lots of lactate in our body. And if oxaloacetate to malate is favored, then that is going opposite TCA. If you look at TCA, you will see that malate from oxaloacetate. Now here, the, the, the reaction goes backwards, oxaloacetate to malate. So as a result, we are going to have less and less of gluconeogenesis. And because we have less and less of gluconeogenesis, we are going to have hypoglycemia in, um, in someone who is alcoholic or someone who is chronic alcoholic because they have lots of NADH, NADH is made lactate, and it inhibits uh, oxaloacetate to malate formation, which will also inhibit gluconeogenesis. So that's one thing. The other thing is why do uh, alcoholics have... Uh, fatty acid or hepatic steatosis. The reason for that is when uh, oxaloacetate to malate is favored, malate goes into fatty acid synthesis. Okay? Since it goes to fatty acid synthesis, more fatty acid is being formed. That's why we have more fatty acid change in the, in the hepatocytes giving rise to hepatic steatosis in chronic alcoholics. Chronic alcoholics also have overproduction of lactate, which gives them the anion gap. Now, increased lactate can, you know, it, the patient, when a person is making lots and lots of lactate and the patient is not making pyruvate dehydrogenase, the pathway cannot enter TCA. When the pathway cannot enter TCA, the body is not making as much ATP as the body needs. When the body is not making as much energy, the body is deprived of energy. As a result, that's why we see chronic alcoholic being very thin because they have protein breakdown to provide for that energy because all that pyruvate has been shuttled to make lactate. Okay? So that's why chronic alcoholics tend to be very, very anorexic looking. 